welcome back into another great edition of The Hop with Gabe and Steven. My name is Gabe, joined by my boy Steven. We are The Hop. We drink craft beer. We have a good time. We entertain. Sometimes we sing. Sometimes we speak in other accents. We don't know what's going to happen. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome in, people. This is The Hop, and we are a little hungover after last week's Oktoberfest celebration after drinking four beers in one episode so this one we only have one <laughs> just one beer and uh it's just uh that's all that is but it's gonna this be is a great the hair one of the dog episode <laughs> we're just resetting you're just keeping it going but you just need one and you're good to go we are we are kidding but we really do only have one beer it's another this has only happened once in the history of the hop uh when we did mac brewing which was round 60, no, that's false. It was round like 80-something, I think, uh, 78. Too many to count, Round bro. 78 was the last time we had a one-beer situation. Uh, but Soul yeah. Mega is the name of the brewery, Soul Mega Brewing out of Washington, D.C. They got one beer, and we have it in our possession, and we're going to be drinking it today, and we're excited about it. If you are on YouTube, which is a thing you can do, we are a video podcast. You can check us out on YouTube. And if you're on there, this is the liquor store in D.C. that we purchased this beer at because Soul Mega <laughs> also doesn't have a physical brewery. But, you know, it's one of those breweries that we shout really out love. To that, shout out to that craft beer store. They had a bunch of stuff. Yes, we don't know. remember your name, but if you are a lady that works here, we're probably talking to you. Shout out to you. Thank you for your help. But... This is a brewery that we, this is the kind of brewery we love to feature on the show because it's a brewery that we can almost guarantee you haven't heard of. Uh, and if you are someone who's willing to travel for beer, this is one that you may, you know, well, we'll see how the beer is, but uh, it's a <laughs> one that you really do have to go to DC. You kind of got to seek it out, but it's the kind of company that really could could use some love. So we are excited to shout them out because uh, we love we love the place. We love the people. We love the culture. We love what we've read, and we're excited to share that with you. So, and welcome in. The description in. of the beer, especially for me, there was something that I went interesting. Yes. So this will be. This might be considered a first, quote unquote, for the hop. So we'll see. Let's get into it. So you can connect with the show if you want to talk to us, ask us questions, whatever, make recommendations. We are at the HO Podcast on Instagram and Twitter. We're all over the socials. We are available by email. You can send us an email, thehopod at gmail.com. You can use that to make brewery suggestions, beer suggestions, requests. If there's something you'd like to see on the show that we haven't done before, maybe you want to hear about ciders or seltzers or wine or some kind of liquor or something like that, even, you know, anything like that is all fair game. So hit us up, thehopod at gmail.com. And as I mentioned, we are a video podcast. Every week there is a video product of Gabe and me, what we look like with the beer, the can art, the what the beer looks like in the glass. All of those beautiful things, so you can check that out on YouTube. Just search for The Hop, a craft beer podcast. Once you've found it, I would suggest you subscribe. I would suggest you click the bell. That will like get you notified whenever an episode drops or other videos drop as well. And finally, and most importantly, if you have a second, I would love it very much if you would give us a rate and review on Apple Podcasts. It helps the show. It helps other people find the show and join our community of drinkers so uh hit us up on there we're on all the major podcast platforms apple spotify google amazon so hit us up let us know what breweries to hit up next let us know what breweries to repeat let us know if there's an easy slash semi easy way to get beer from the middle of the country we have found it a little more on the difficult side but that doesn't mean we can't get it but with your help we can make a difference. It's a so little coastal know. up here. We're aware of it, but we're trying just, to fix just that. A bit. So. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're you know we're trying to give love to everyone in the middle. We're trying to hit all the all the small yeah. breweries like this one, but you know in in this in the central region. So uh, if you got any ideas in mind or any websites that ship beer, we know of two. Let us know. We are here for you. And with that, we are diving into the beer news of the week. Beer news. All 
right. It would not be an episode of The Hop if Heiser bush was not being sued. And don't worry, people, they are. Um, so Heiser bush is being sued for their cacti agave spiked seltzer. We drank that on this very show on round 71. And basically, there's a, a class action lawsuit that's been proposed, brought up, uh, suggesting that the company has misled consumers into believing that the Cacti Spiked Seltzer drink, Travis Scott's Spiked Seltzer, if you're uninitiated, that people think that it had real agave-based spirits in there, which I guess would mean tequila. Um, it doesn't. It's just sweetened with agave. But this consumer, her name is Rebecca Reed, and she was not aware of that. So she's suing Anheuser-Busch. Now, I tend to be in favor of Anheuser-Busch being sued. It brings me joy in life. <laughs> but uh, Rebecca, with love, you're an idiot. And <laughs> <laughs> there's no liquor in cacti agave spike seltzer and you would know that rebecca if you had listened to round 71 of the hop so anybody who's considering drinking cacti agave spike seltzer i would advise you find round 71 of the hop just scroll back in your podcast feeds we'll tell you everything that's in that drink oh and then some and then some but it does not include liquor but apparently you can be sued for that so she thinks it should be called cacti agave sweetened spiked seltzer which just doesn't roll off the tongue that doesn't the same that way. doesn't work bex two quick things one i would love it if they put tequila in that and two uh whoever this lawyer is for abi this this lawyer's working overtime good for <laughs> them give them a raise uh, all right so we talked about Speaking of seltzer, we talked about seltzer kind of dying off. Well, not really. Not yet, anyway. Boston Beer is opening a truly hard seltzer tap room in Stevens' backyard, L.A., which is interesting. So it's going to be brand new. They're calling it a, quote, fully immersive seltzer tap room. Now, we're actors. When, you hear, when we hear fully immersive, we think we're going to get pulled up on stage. So... <laughs> Not sure what that's about, but we'll check back in if we ever get more info. 12 taps, cocktails, small food menu, 8,000 square feet, square foot venue, hosting 350 visitors, indoor and outdoor spaces. The little artist rendering of it kind of looks kind of cool. Not going to lie. It is seltzer, so that kind of diminishes it just a bit. But, you know, L.A., you know, if you're out in the hot sun, you want to drink something chill. Uh, it's apparently still around. So if you like Truly, go to L.A. I have never heard of a tap room that does exclusively seltzer, so this is unique. And if there was a place yeah. to do it, it would be Los Angeles. It is interesting, though, because specifically we talked about how Truly is kind of like, uh, seems to be like not doing so hot in the Boston Beer portfolio. So it's interesting that How'd they are the ones... How'd y'all pay for this? yeah. But uh, that to look forward to. This one is not news, but just so everyone's aware, we have mentioned the lawsuit between Jack's Abbey and Atlantic Distributing several times. And I we mentioned last week that it is going to trial, but a judge did order that Jack's Abbey has to continue working with Atlantic Distributing in and honoring the agreement that they had in place. So basically what I'm saying is if you live in like Rhode Island or wherever this issue is going on, which is the Rhode Island sort of area, you will still be able to get your Jack's Abbey while they sue each other. So uh, I think things will be a little tense in the meetings, but they're going to keep <laughs> working together until this lawsuit is resolved by a jury. Yeah, I was just about to say, they have to like keep working together, and it's like, Kyle, Jason, <laughs> like <laughs> they just have to <laughs> ignore it. <laughs> a little awkward, but you know what? You can still get your Jack's Abbey. You can still get your framing hammers in framing hammer. Rhode Island. Yukon Huskies now have a beer. My school, my team, my guys. What's good, my guy? Yukon is partnering with Kinsman Brewing. They are introducing a new beer. It is called Husky Hops. It is a hazy IPA. It looks and sounds dope. If you have followed us and have looked at our Instagram story, not as of late, but in the past, you will know that we've been to Kinsman many times it's in Connecticut, uh, not far from our hometown. Great beers, great pizza, great vibe, great awesome space. Uh, we love it there. We go there all the time. And uh, now they are working with the University of Connecticut Division of Athletics 
which I think is funny. They're making a beer for athletes, and athletes got to stay fit, but whatever. <laughs> we'll talk about it later. Uh, it is called Husky Hops. It is a great tribute to the Husky spirit. It is a hazy IPA, like I said. And this is the really cool thing that I like. Former UConn Huskies football co-captain and now the current Kinsman manager, his name is Jeff DeLuca, was instrumental in forming this kind of bond and starting up this whole thing. He is quoted saying, It's an honor to be part of such a great celebration of Husky spirit with such a phenomenal IPA brewed by Kinsman. The new IPA is described as medium-bodied yet refreshing, Base made from clean American Pilsner malt and fluffy malted wheat with intense notes of pineapple, white peach, and tangerine. I don't think I need to hear anything else. I will promise you all this. I will get this can. I will find this can. I will drink this beer. I will add this can to the can wall because not only because of Yukon, but the can is super dope. It's got the new logo. It looks great. It's blue. That's my color. Very very exciting. Once again, not news, but we just figured we'd let Gabe have his moment. <laughs> Su- super just, dope. Uh, we don't tend to feature beer releases on this show unless they're super gross or super delicious. But um, you know what? It was UConn related and we Gabe had to get that out. So congratulations. <laughs> All right. I saw something that disturbed me, which was that <laughs> the company called Shine Water, it's a Mich- Michigan-based drink company. It's like a physician-approved thing that has like vitamin D in it, but it's also alcohol. It's like a ready to drink cocktail, but it's also a hydration beverage. I don't know, but it's secured a deal with Anheuser-Busch. That's not the point of this story. The point is that the headline said they signed the distribution deal and they launched pouches. And then I moved on with my life. And then I saw another article that said, could fruity alcohol pouches be the next big thing in the alcohol industry? This was an article that was on Brewbound. And it disturbed me. And it's it's a it's a real thing that's really happening. Uh, there's a company called Sunis, uh, S-U-N-I-C-E. The I is uncapitalized. The rest of it is. I don't know why. But they have decided to make alcoholic pouch packaged beverages to kind of cater to the generation of consumers that grew up on like Capri Sun and like Kool-Aid jammers and high C jukes boxes. And I find it extremely uh disturbing myself thoughts gabe you want to drink an alcoholic capri sun here's the thing i actually have seen this quite a bit i've seen it just like at bars or at like festivals or something you've seen this i feel like from not a bar like like an outdoor like my friends in chicago um yeah, bartender. I like can a, I get can I get the the can pouch I get a Capri Sun? And you're just can sitting there at the lunch. <laughs> yeah, I I think from a business standpoint, it could be good just because like it would make to go sales easier because you can be able to carry it. But yeah, at the same time, like I don't have a problem with it. I just don't need it. Yeah, if that makes sense. Steven's no one very does. opposed. I just it's it's weird. It comes from uh so Simon Thorpe is the kind of industry veteran. He if you don't know who he is, he's a former CEO of Paps Brewing as well as Duvel Morcott, and he was also heavily involved in the sale of New Belgium to Little World Lion Little World Holdings. But he is the guy who is part of the team behind this whole thing, and there's just pictures of like what I'm going to just, I mean, all I can see are their their legs, but based on their clothing, I'm going to call them hipsters. And they're sitting out in the <laughs> sun, and they have what looks like a Capri Sun with a little straw in it, but it's alcoholic. And I, I, I feel that, like, let's have some respect for ourselves when we're drinking. I mean, yeah, come yeah. on, people. A seltzer is one thing, but where do we draw the line? Maybe it's good. I don't know. It's a, it's a yeah, whole vibe. I don't know. It's, I just... I, I again just go back to the question of just like, but but why though? Yes, exactly. I, I don't and know, but you know what? That's a perfect transition into our next segment, which we haven't hit in a while. But I, I think the phrase "but why though" is the perfect way to transition oh, right yes. into this. This week in gross. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
This is a double dose of This Week in Gross because these people got This Week in Gross last year, but they made it again, and we're going to do it again. Affy Tapple and Phase 3 Brewing Company. Phase 3 Brewing Company is a brewery out of... It's a brewery out of out of Chicago, I believe, and they have teamed up to relaunch their Bushel of Apples beer. It is apparently it was really popular last year, and so they're doing it again. We did talk about it last year, so apologies for that. But basically, it's a it's a beer that's made to mimic the Affy Tapple original peanut caramel apple, and because it's peanuts in it. That's really the main reason it found itself on This Week in Gross. They started with a blonde ale base, and then they <laughs> added apples, apple juice to the brew, actually. Uh, and then Steven they even added- said, well, it's, got, it's got peanuts. Gabe, get out of the way. Move. We're doing this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, you know what? I was, ma- I was willing to let it go when it was caramel and apples, because caramel in a blonde ale could be good. Apple yeah, juice a little weird, bad. but then the peanuts just push it over the edge for me. But- it is sold in a four pack. Uh, if you're in the Chicago kind of area, you can get your hands on it. It is, uh, yeah. It's again though. It's it's bec- they're doing it again because they got overwhelmingly positive feedback last year. So once again, the internet yeah. has brought this upon us. Um, I I just feel like there's too much going on. Yes, I feel like I feel like. If they took out maybe one thing, I'd be like, okay, maybe. But like, I just look at the, I, I don't know. I, I was never big. I don't, candy apples. Like, I get it. But like, I was always just like, yeah, I'm good. So for me personally, I'm like, no. But also, there's just too much going on. Tart apple taste hits your taste buds first, followed by caramel and peanut with a crisp finish. Yeah, but where's the beer, though? This right. is a beer. Exactly. That, like, that's the that's the problem I have. Like at, at a certain point, it's like we're just drinking liquid candy. Yes. Like you took the fall thing too far. Just make a just just put a little pumpkin in there. Call it a day. We don't have to get weird about it. That's why they make those Jack Daniels commercials or Jim Beam commercials. It's because of people like this. Stop it. Phase three. I go will go back to phase two. <laughs> I will very quickly play devil's advocate and say okay. um, they raised money for the Greater Chicago Food Depository, which is a food bank serving Chicago and all of Cook County through the oh. proceeds from this beer. So like, I'm sorry. that's great. Well, then in that case, we'll, we'll give them applause. Well done. Yeah. Thank you for the charity. It's very nice of you. And that's excellent. But as for the beer itself. Oh, my God. Yes. Ew. Yeah. I was just about to say that, like, great, four thousand ended up raising four thousand dollars. Great, awesome. However, I'm just gonna write a check. I don't. Need, you can give that to yeah, someone else. You can. Keep I don't need it. And take the peanuts out of it. Maybe we'll have a different conversation at that point. You ready to go to the nation's capital? I'm ready to go to that house that's all like white and stuff. Sure, let's go. Ooh, lead man. us into it. I propose. A fun, loving toast to get us into the mood for drinking some soul. The wonderful love of a beautiful maid and the love of a staunch, true man and the love of a baby, unafraid, having existed since life began. But the greatest love, the love of love, even greater than that of a mother, is the tender, passionate, infinite love of one drunken sod for another. Cheers, bitches. What is that from? What is that? Is that a song? No, I, just I a know poem that. I found that I okay. thought was cool, and uh, other people online did as well, so it made its way onto the hop. Great. Well, we're going to Soul Mega. Good job, Gabe. That was beautiful and uh and very appropriate for very soulful for the soulful brewery we're about to enter so ah, 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 ah. thoughts thoughts <laughs> thoughts are running <laughs> Soul 
Omega. All righty. We weren't kidding. They have one beer, and it's the Worldwide American Pale Ale, and that's what we are getting into here. It is a 5.5% ABV beer. IBUs are at 41. Uh, Untapped has it at 3.55. No reviews from Beer Advocate. And it's their OG. They launched the company, I believe, in 2018-ish, and they've kind of been brewing this beer, distributing this beer ever since. They do have other beers from time to time. I shouldn't say it's not like they've just spent the whole uh, the last four years just making this. Right. They have done collaborations. Most, most of the other beers, it's it's co- yes, it's collaborations with other companies, with other breweries, yes. and they um, they did a they black is beautiful. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's they have the brewing experience. It's just if you want a soul mega only soul mega beer, you're getting this guy. And uh, it's really cool. American Pale Ale. And uh, so going back to what I said earlier, this was the thing. This was the little quote that kind of had me interested for this is from the brewery. Worldwide is a twist on the American Pale Ale inspired by a variety of global beer styles. This straw gold pale ale contains notes of a robust tropical and citrus flavor and a hint of spice. It's a refreshing crowd pleaser with soul. They basically said, we're going to take a bunch of stuff and kind of mix it. That doesn't happen a whole lot. Yeah, they were interviewed by a different podcast and uh, they were they were talking about this beer and they said that it's a stylistic mix of beer types from around the world, including Apparently, the pale ale, the IPA, fine, the American wheat, and the Belgian. Intriguing, weird, different. If all of that is happening in one beer, I don't know what to do about it. Uh, But the point was to kind of create a beer with diverse flavors, appealing to multiple palates so that it can be enjoyed by all. So it can be a worldwide communal experience, right? And so that's... um, that's what we're doing, and if if I'm about to get an IPA and a Belgian in the same beer, uh, my mind will be blown. So yeah, that's the thing. Like I I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what's gonna happen. Are we gonna get taller? Are we gonna turn into you know monsters? What's gonna happen? I don't know, but you'll see. You will see. I can tell you right now that it's it's it pours a golden. Pure gold in color, not hazy oh, yeah. at all. I was expecting more haze based on other pictures that I saw, but this one is not hazy at all. It's uh, kind of looks like a pilsner with a little bit more fuzz. Maybe it looks like a blonde ale. It's gold in it. I would on the SRM chart. I would say eight, nine. Uh, it's it's pretty yeah. sunshine yellow, sunshine in a glass. See through. I can see everything. Very clear. Yeah. Uh, a small ring of head, but not much else. Even when I first poured it, it kind of went away very, very quickly. Uh, not seeing a whole lot of stickiness, maybe just a tad. And uh, we both have just like regular pint glasses. So, And if you're on YouTube, you, you can see even in my glass, because it's so clear, you can see just the bubbles sort of zinging up from the bottom. Like you can see it fizzing. It's got yeah. uh, plenty of carbonation the head retention uh, was there for a little bit. It was sort of this frothy ivory white head. It has since receded into a ring around the glass. No lacing to speak of. Wow. I'm getting sweetness. I'm also getting a little bit of spiciness. I, now I'm seeing that Belgian, but I feel like it kind of has a sweet malty backbone with not a lot of hops off of the first smell of it. But uh, that's where we're at. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of citrus first. I'm getting uh, light citrus like grapefruit and some orange. I am getting some green apple, maybe some stone fruit, uh, a little bit of honey. To your point, the malt is Mm. there. Definitely some some straw, some hay. Do I get like Belgian spice? Maybe a little. I mean, uh, like two percent. Yeah, it's not strong. Like, you're like not I don't know if I would this. pick that out if they hadn't said it, you know, but because right. they said yeah, it, I'm I like, oh, yeah, that. maybe. Yeah, maybe just because it was in our heads. Um, but yeah, I mean, I am those 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 citrus flavors are up front, but I, I just kind of like kept going and I just yeah, it's like two percent there, you know. 
We don't know exactly what kind of hops are in here, but there's definitely not a lot of pine or uh, resin or bitter on the nose. It's definitely the sweeter side of things. You know, I would say more towards your classic sort of more mosaics and Simcoe's and things of that nature, more in the tropical family. It definitely has a tropical smell to it. Um, Maybe Cascade? Maybe, yeah. In a way, it reminds me of another brewery that we did a while ago in New Jersey when we went to, I think it was Montclair that had that brew with the the fruit in it, the, um, the baobab fruit. You remember that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In a way, it reminds me of that. It's very tropical, but it doesn't smell. It's not like mango guava tropical. It's like right. a little bit sweeter than that. Um, but that's that's what I get. I mean, that is coming from the hops, but that's the hop style that we're dealing with. We're not dealing with uh, any kind of, like I said, pine or resin or bitter bite uh, on the nose. Yeah, I'm getting like, you mentioned apple. I'm getting like Granny Smith, green apple. Yes, green like apple. The, the, the rind of it. Yeah. Um, like if you mashed a bunch of apple, if you're trying to make like homemade applesauce or something, you got that like smell in the kitchen of you mashing apples together because you're a beast and you know how to DIY and do your stuff. I sure as hell don't, but here we are. Um, yeah, it smells really good. It It's more on the realm, in the realm of pale ale IPA than Belgian. I will say that. Or Correct. wheat. I don't get a lot of yeast. I don't get a lot of uh, American or Belgian wheat on the nose, but we'll see on the taste. Uh, Gabe, are you in need of a beer? Steven, I've been in need of a beer since noon. <laughs> All right. Here, we, here go. we go. Okay. Okay. That is refreshing. Mm-hmm. That is sweet. It's full in a way. It's It's got a, a, a slight bit of creaminess as it's going down. The back end for me is hoppy with a little bit of those citrus type flavors. It's got a light to medium carbonation, which I think for some reason just kind of helps. Not that it would need to stand alone, but it really does bring out the flavors more on the carbonation. Um, I think it's got the sweet, subtle flavors of the apple, of the grapefruit. I think those, those notes are very, very present. Um, I'm not getting like a huge hot bite, but I don't necessarily need that in this. But the first word that came to mind was refreshing. Yeah. I mean, I'm searching for evidence of the wheat ale, the Belgian, the IPA. I think, you know, at the end of the day, the name of it is American Pale Ale. And that's what it tastes like. It tastes like a pale ale. It's got elements of some hops are present a little bit. It's very earthy, uh, and but but overall, it's super easy drinking. It is like I mean, this is like water. It's just like yeah, just I mean, it's so crisp. It's so refreshing. It drinks more like a pilsner than anything else. It's just that there's there's more f- like hop flavor than malt flavor. I don't get a whole lot of straw or bread uh, on it. I do yeah, get more no. citrus. I mean, I feel like. On the nose, I, I first got that multi backbone, but yeah, you're not really going to get that on the taste. It's more of the, the citrus, like you just said, the the classic flavors. Um, I think if you're not a typical beer drinker, maybe try this. I, I don't, because it tastes like a beer, but it doesn't taste like a normal beer. It tastes a little more on the... I don't want to say sour side because it doesn't taste like a sour. It, it's more on the like refreshing sort of spritzer flavor side of things. I would say if you're not a beer drinker, I don't know if you would like this. Like it's not the way I would say like when we do sours, it's like, well, if you're not a beer drinker, this will be a different kind of beer for you. But I would say that if you're someone who's like, no, I like like Bud Light. I like you know, big beers. I like base. I like Corona and all my friends like IPAs and I don't like IPAs. And like, I would like to try and dip my toe in that water, but I don't, then this would be a good one for you because it does drink more like a lager. It's 
got the lighter flavor, but it has that kiss of like citrusness uh, and some fruit and stuff without being overtly hoppy, without being in your face. Right. I do think though that sort of on the back end or in the middle of the palate, like at some point there's a brisk sort of kiss of Belgian yeast spice or like a little bit of like a, of a weediness. There's a weediness to it for sure. Mm. I don't, I don't want to say that that's not there because it is, it's just not present. It's, but it's, I mean, it's just not the main thing, but right. it is in there for sure. Like you get this little hint of like, Oh, I think some Belgian just like whizzed by my head. Hello. Hello. Dad. Bel- Belgian? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I agree with that though. I think if, I think it's hidden, but I think if you really know what you're looking for, you can find it easily. Yeah, 100%. Um, so, I mean, this is this is their main brew, and they have been brewing it for years, and it's probably gone through a lot of variations. And because they're a very small brewery, too, it's possible that the recipe shifts from time to time. You know, the, the yeah, 2021 sure. version of Soul Mega might be different from the 2020 version of Soul Mega. We don't know. Uh, go to this this beer store here on the corner in the middle of D.C., called craft beer seller i think and talk to that lady and and get your hands hey on it lady and try hey, it for yourself hey lady the company was founded by a pair of friends who met uh, at work their names are elliot and jai they were novice home brewers and then they sort of got into beer trading you know ipso facto one leads to the other age old story and now they brew Beer. They got positive feedback from friends. They started the the plans, and then they founded this brewery. But they don't have a sp- you know they don't have a tap room. Uh, they don't even. I mean, I think that they pretty much contract brew. I don't think that they are. I don't even know if they have their own space. So uh, we know that Elliot is the head of sales and marketing, while Jai is the uh, president and creative force behind the whole brewery. Um, but yeah, they have been, you know, collaborating with a few other people, um, other breweries and other organizations. Uh, I'm trying to find that list. Amps and Ales, uh, Black Beer Traveler. Um, this website is not big enough. Spreading uh, El- the common good. There, there's a bunch of them. They've done yeah. a, collaborations with a bunch of breweries in the area, they say that their mission is to be recognized in the craft beer industry for the stylistically unstyled craft beer offerings and to create a culture that embraces creativity and inclusion. Soul Mega literally means, quote, the embodiment of something great. It represents our vision for this company and our belief that our dream will manifest much larger than we can presently imagine. The name Soul Mega serves as a reminder of the limitless potential of the human spirit. And amen. Yeah, I it's just, you know, it's the kind of brewery that it, we had to we had to seek these beers out. We had to go to a beer store. We had to find them. And uh, we wanted to do it because it's the kind of brewery that, again, it's it is much easier to go to established breweries and just say, like, OK, this brewery's here. We know where we can get their beers. They have a map right. on the website. Here's where they distribute. But a brewery like this is just uh, takes a little bit more work to find them because they don't have the money to have the same kind of distribution channels. But it's well worth it because when you find brew- brews like this, and that's not to say like it's not like this is like a home brew or like an experimental thing, but it, but it's it's smaller and that makes it more rewarding to seek out uh, to spend your money on and to drink ultimately because I just find that you. It's kind of like watching an indie movie or something as opposed to watching like the latest Marvel flick. It's like you might you know, it's just going to be a little bit more creative, have a little bit more fun, you know, might be might be a little twist in there that you weren't expecting. Uh it may not but be perfect, it might be who knows. Sometimes you need a night like that. You don't need the Marvel. You need the like I want to think. I want to sit down and I want to feel something. <laughs> you know, sometimes yeah. you need that. Absolutely. Um, the the beer is slash was we're not exactly sure on this but is slash was available to local businesses in the DC area as well. Um, other kind of like restaurants and establishments um, had this guy on tap the worldwide, and so they've you know they've expanded to the area, which is pretty cool. And uh, because he mentioned it before we started recording, I'm going to give him a little shout out. Steven mentioned how much he loved the pull tap. It's blue. 
And what does blue mean on the hop? <laughs> I'm blue. is what it means rolling across the screen that's this what is the first time we played that drop for not a beer for it's literally a pull tap <laughs> it's honestly it's kind of not, like i mean there's no reason that a blue pull tab should make should be exciting to me but it's just you don't see it much and it just it caught my eye and it matches the can art and yeah um their beers are available uh through if you don't want to have to like seek them out if you're in the dc area there is a website called Beer Me, B-I-E-R-M-I, yes. and that's sort of a delivery service. You can use that to to get their beer delivered. So uh, you can place an order through that. That was what the brewery directed us to do, but we weren't in town long enough to do it. But you can do that if you don't want to have to like seek them out. But they also do have a map on their website that points you to liquor stores that they distribute to. Uh, they also have a shop on there. They do more than just beer. They have uh, T-shirts and other things like that, bottle openers and stuff that you can yeah, purchase. Sure. So uh, check out their website. It's soulmega.com, uh, and you can find this beer. Also, I really want to get my hands on this bottle opener that they have, which is the size yeah, this, of a credit card. Yeah, this thing is cool. Those 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 things are great because you just throw that, you stash in that the in wallet. your wallet, and yeah. you just pull it out like, don't worry, this one's on me. <laughs> like, and just pull it out and look like a badass. Yeah, dude, Washington, D.C., good beers. Uh, this was part of our little, I'm calling it a field trip. I forgot what we called it. Do we call it midweek beer uh, we run call, or something? Midweek or... Uh, Brewery tour. Yeah, I don't know. S- south something, to, uh, not quite... S- I don't know. I don't remember what we called it, but... Uh, yeah. We have, we're due for another one, to be honest. But um, yeah, this was part of that trip, and... We, you know, it was, it's just, it's well worth it because it's a, it's a brewery we never would have been able to get our hands on if we hadn't made right. the the physical trip to go down there. Uh, so I'm glad we did. And this beer is great. It's, it's refreshing. It's easy drinking. It's a uh, perfect summer beer, perfect uh, tailgating beer, perfect, you know, the baseball playups are coming up. Grab one of these. I mean, it's, it's perfect the, for those the, kinds of things. The baseball playoffs are coming up, and although we don't love to mention them, as of right now, the Yankees are in. We're in. We're in. Exclamation point. Will we still Mike, be in by the time this episode drops? Mike, I, Mike Breen doesn't cover baseball, but that's oh, I, all we got. I we know. That's have, all we have. <laughs> we don't have Joe Buck yelling like, or, or um, what's his name? This ball is hit deep. See ya. Mike, okay. Yeah. There we, we go. There we go. <laughs> Uh, the Yankees are in, and I watched like five minutes of that game on Sunday, and the only five minutes of it that I watched was when Gio Urshela tried to do his best Derek Jeter impression and yeah, dove into he, the dugout. Dove into the other, oh, other mm. dugout, yeah. Ooh. Hey, sometimes you got to make the play. Good job, I, Gio. Um, uh, final thoughts on this beer before we move on to our I, next thing? I really like it. I... I Again, the only word I can think of is refreshing. It's very refreshing. It's just very good. It's It's got a lot of flavor to it, but it doesn't compromise, I don't think, on anything. Um, you know, it's, it's very easy to drink. It's very... This is one of those beers that... It's kind of like the fun-loving person at a party. They walk in, they're friends with everyone immediately. I love those kind of people. I feel like this beer is kind of like that you can kind of bring it anywhere tailgating uh football sundays uh you know drinking on a roof in the city maybe at to dinner or in w- washington dc uh i don't know in the halls of the congress <laughs> in the halls of congress um <laughs> Yeah, it's. I, I think it's. I agree. Uh, I love what you just said because it kind of encapsulates the mission of this brewery. Um, I think it's it's easy drinking. It's a delight. It 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 touts itself as sort of a hybrid of all these beer styles, which we thought would be kind of may, could be a little bit of a weird crossover and kind of overwhelming. But it's not because it's all done very subtly. And all, at the end of the day, it is it is a pale ale, so it's not. But there's there's little hints of other things that make you go, oh, yeah, there's maybe ingredients in here that wouldn't normally be in a pale ale. 41 yeah. IBUs is a little bit surprising to me. 
doesn't taste like it has that much bitterness, but that's just my nerd talking. Um, <laughs> but outside of that, I think it's 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 great. Uh, I have no complaints. It's going to be gone in like a moment. I'll, so I also love the the emphasis on the name of it, and especially the the brewery name, but also the worldwide like bringing yeah. the whole world together. That's that's you know that inclusionary tactic is really great and well done. That's what we we continue to look for when we feature a brewery. And with that, we're going to move into our next segment featuring Blue Pull Tabs, Bob Ross, and everything in between. Can Art and Crafts. All righty. Can Arts and Crafts might be a little quick. Let's extend it. All right. Soul Mega Worldwide American Pale Ale. Right off the bat, when you look at the can, what do you see? On the map, on the map, on the map, on the map. That's what you see. You see a map of the globe. Not every country, but, you know, most of them. Uh, I, I like this. It's It's got the, the blue background with the green countries. Uh, we're looking at, you know, uh, a few of them. It's fairly simple. Uh, Soul Mega is big, bright, bold, beautiful, worldwide, right underneath it. Blue and green can. But I will say about this, I think this can will stand out depending on what it is next to. If you're looking for Soul Mega specifically, I think it may be easily to find if it's, you know, again, next to counteracting colors and whatnot. And then we got the pull tab. And I can't believe I'm saying this on Can Arts and Crafts, but the pull tab added some points. It's blue, it's shiny blue, and I have an appreciation. Steven has an appreciation. If you were listening 20 minutes ago, we played the friggin' drop. So here we go. That I wasn't gonna play that again. <laughs> not a not even a little bit. I was waiting for it, honestly. Anywho. Uh, it's great. I like it. I was originally going to give it one score. I think I'm going to bump it up a bit. So I'm going to give it an 8.1 8 .1 out of 10. I think it's really great. It's really cool. And uh, Bob Ross agrees. He's here somewhere. There he is. That little son of a bitch. You little, you little man. You. Ah. Yeah, whatever. All right. We only had one beer. But that's okay. Sometimes all you need is one. And that is another great edition of Can Arts and Crafts. Bada bing, bada boom. Soul Mega, a brewery <laughs> Normally, with mega soul. We talk about what else is on tap. Well, nope. we did that already. But we did that like already. we said, they do collaborations from time to time. I would have loved to try their Black Is Beautiful, and they do other things yeah. of that nature. So you know, look out. You know, they they collaborate with other breweries in the area, and so you never know what you're going to be able to find if you're in DC. Keep your eyes peeled at your local craft beer hotspots. And well, let us know how we can get them shipped to us outside of the D.C. area. Honestly, Thank you. please help us. Yes. We're, we're running out of options. But <laughs> this was great. This brewery is great. This beer is great. And it looks like we only have time for one more thing. Sometimes when there's nothing on our minds and we just need a good piece of news for the last call segment, we turn to the UK because weird shit happens there and uh, it's stuff that doesn't seem to happen here and they have amazing stories and I love that the Mirror specifically has the time to report on shit like this. Before you even say anything, we had two ideas for our last call. I had one. Stephen had one. They were both for Mirror. That's how good this place is. Yeah, the Mirror Continue. has the time. I just wanted time, to give them their credit. The Mirror has the time to report on crazy shit like a man who had the police called on him because he has weekly Nerf gun fights with his neighborhood and shit got a little out of control. So uh, Dan Scott is the man's name. He moved into his new home with his girlfriend last year. And uh, somehow, some way, he got into a Nerf gun war with other members of the, with other households on the street. Um, I guess there, it has since gotten out of control or whatever. It's turned into a big thing. 
They, he <laughs> says they have Nerf Wars about once or twice a week. It can happen randomly when people are getting home from work, and most Friday nights we go around ambushing people. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's with Nerf guns and Nerf darts, and it yeah, sounds great. like a lot of fun, and I really like this because they got other people in the neighborhood involved like this isn't like oh my neighbor and their one other person no it's like a bunch of people but then somebody called the cops and uh they said that they had to come because a gun was involved and the guy was like you do know it's a nerf gun right um i don't (laughs) know if he's allowed to continue having this nerf gun battle i don't know also who's the stiff who fucking called who's the karen that call yeah and exactly said, they're being bad well according to the article and the information that was provided apparently uh the quote that was said by the police was this was a routine response and words of advice were given to the individual and no further action was taken as there was no offenses reported literally the neighbor just was pissed off because there were foam bullets everywhere and it's like okay but they they say they clean them up they're just having fun despite the police visit dan has ordered more toy guns to carry on the neighborhood shootouts good for you stick with it dan he says that apparently he has around a thousand bullets he has a collection of four nerf guns and he said that he just he said one time he lay in a bush in a camouflage outfit. Yeah. And uh, his girlfriend was showing the neighbors on their like doorbell camera. They had like a ring thing. And then he saw them leaving and he just like fucking bombarded their car. Just like what fucking town. See, the only thing is you wouldn't be able to do this at like 7 a.m. on a Monday. Like when people are going to work <laughs> with their coffee. coffee and their briefcase and they're like running late. It's like. Hey, Dan, okay, no, not now. We gotta, I gotta go to work, but like after work, let's do this. Like, I feel like that'd be so much fun. Yeah, he does say that they, they clean up after him, but I don't know. Some, some neighbor, some neighbor didn't like it. Apparently, it was all, it was all in good fun. Dan thought it was good and funny. Um, but I, the thing is, I kind of want to move into this neighborhood, if I'm honest. Yeah. I, because I haven't touched a Nerf gun in a long time, and I really want to know what the technology is that's out there now. Because when I was a kid, they were getting better and better. Yeah. But I really want to know what's going on in the Nerf community. I never really thought about <laughs> it until this moment. I want to live next to someone that has so much fun and joy in their life. They inspire me to go on to Amazon, buy a Nerf gun. And when someone says, oh, you ordered a Nerf gun, like, what's this for? It's like me and my neighbor are just going to go have some fun shoot it out like that yeah it sounds awesome it sounds like it's a lot of fun and it sounds like it's a fun way to pass the time and to the karen who called the cops jokes on you they didn't do anything they, well what were they gonna do they all hey, launch hey, sneak uh, attacks as residents come home from work or relax on weekends a lot of which has been captured by the homeowner's doorbell camera i mean I just want to see a day. Like, do you think if you had a really bad day at work that this would like brighten up your day or would you be like, Dan, I'm not in the mood? Well, stop shooting at me, Dan. Come on, Dan. It depends (laughs) where your headspace is at that day, because I feel like if you had a bad day, your boss was on you, just everything went wrong. And then you see this neighbor like, ha, ha, ha. You'd be like, let's go. Ah!" Like, just start unloading because because you like you're like, I, I need to just like, no, let's do this. Like, let's go. You'd like hate um, shoot him. Like you'd, it'd be like a, you'd, you'd put some rage into it, but it's Nerf guns. We're talking about it's, Nerf it's guns. Ner- yes. I was, I was about to say that. Nerf let's, guns. Nerf guns. Stop. Foam. Not real things. Fake. Let's all get that cleared up. Fake. Yes. Um, yeah. Hey, sometimes you get a little, you're like me, get a little extra competitive because <laughs> you know, you want to, you want to make your presence known. They do have an image of uh, him that I assume is from that video doorbell of him just pointing a gun at a camera at a, at a this car. person's <laughs> what appears to be is that a te- it's not a Tesla the I don't know what kind part, of car it is but the best part is the cops at the door and then the quote that said apparently he said to the cops he goes you do know it's a Nerf gun <laughs> don't you and they were like yeah we know we just have to double check. The police said, you don't want to to annoy all your neighbors. You've just moved in. But they said they play with Nerf guns with their kids as well. (laughs) They're like, we get it, man. We understand. Yeah. Uh, At that point, the cops are just showing up to say hello. 
I think it's I think it's great. I admire that this man is still a child at heart. He did say he used to work with kids, so that's why he has all these costumes and Nerf guns. But like, isn't this what we need in life? Just find some joy. Just shoot your neighbors with a Nerf gun. Whoa, <laughs> with yeah. a Nerf gun. But let's Sometimes just you- let's have some fun. I don't know my neighbors, and I live in an apartment building, so I that would be. Uh, pretty intense if a Nerf gun battle broke out in here. It would be, we have a lot of hallways, there's elevators, it would be a lot going on. My neighbor is like, oh god. <laughs> I want to get the number right. I think she's 97. No, oh. she's not. No, I'm kidding. We, we love, love her. you. <laughs> she's she's not listening, so we can we can talk about it. She doesn't know what podcasts Why are. Why not? Uh, she's old, but uh, her firing a Nerf gun I think would be the highlight of my life. I think it'd be the <laughs> funniest thing. You know her. You've met her. I think it'd be the funniest thing in the world just to have her like, ah! I have met her. I'm not sure that she's met me, but I have met her. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I feel like if you showed up, she'd be like, who are you? I guarantee it. <laughs> I promise you that that would be the case. Oh, oh she's okay. okay. She's great. We'll get her a Nerf gun for her birthday. Anywho. Well, uh, with that, we are going to call it a day. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Soul Mega, thank you very much for joining us, for sticking with us. We highly encourage you. Get out there, support this brewery, support breweries like them. These are the yes. ones that um, that matter. So um, get out there and, and do what you can. Above all, above all, if you, if you, even if you don't want to support, the beer is really good. So... That's a reason in and of itself. We would rather you support, but we'll we'll add all the positives. So yeah, thank you guys again for joining us. Support this brewery. Support all other breweries. Like, comment, subscribe. We got another episode coming up next week. And if you have a brewery like this near your house that's small and mighty and maybe we can't get in our local beer stores, thopod at gmail.com. Let us know about it. We would love to feature them on The Hop. Please and thank you. Figure it out. Thank you, guys. We love you. See you next week. Cheers, everybody.